Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome into a uh, Wednesday edition of the Computer America Show. Got a terrific show planned for you in the uh, in the uh, second hour. We're going to be talking to uh, um, a very interesting guest uh, from uh, about network load balancing. We're talking about voice voice over IP with Mushroom Networks. We have the company CEO on the program, and in the first hour, we have not one but two very interesting guests from Intel. Uh, we're going to be talking in the second uh, half of the first hour. We're going to be talking to Bruce Snell, who is the director of technical solutions for Internet Intel. Excuse me, for Intel Security. Uh, we're going to be talking about wearable technology and why it's so One huge. One minute the holidays. until show time. And in the, in the first part of the show, Jason Ziller is here. He is the director of Thunderbolt Marketing. We're going to be talking about Thunderbolt Three technology. Yes, that's right. So sit back and relax and enjoy two hours of the Computer America Show coming right at you right here. Thirty seconds. Fifteen. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co host, Ben. And uh, welcome into another edition of the Computer America show. I'm very excited. Uh, we've got a terrific show planned for you. In the second hour, we're going to have the CEO of uh, Mushroom Networks talking about voice over IP technology. I mean, it's really coming to its own. And uh, we're going to be talking to him. Uh, and in the first hour, yes, it is uh, our Intel show. Uh, Intel is secondary perspective is, of course, change the default passwords. Right? If you have, um, you know, if you have a device that is, you know, connecting to the the internet, um, make sure you change the password so that it's not easy to for somebody to Google it online um, and and be able to to jump in and and take it take control of your device. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I don't know, and, and we have to keep saying it. Don't make your password password, and or one two three or <laughs> four. You know, just you know, uh, you can't do that. Really, you have to make well, it. Some and, and I think it's, I think it's up to us to make sure that we keep repeating that, right? Because yeah, anytime you see like a, a password, uh, you know, a, a, a password dump from anonymous or any of those guys, there's always like what a not you know password or one two three or button or you know just something something silly and and people just you know tend to use those simple passwords uh because it, there's just too many passwords to keep track of now yeah exactly uh but you can't fall into that trap you have to you have to find uh, uh ways or mnemonics or something that uh, uh that's going to make it uh more difficult for, for well you know i i admit i used to i used to have a a, a fairly complex pattern in my head of how I would change a password based on what site I was logged into and, and all of that. Uh, but it just became unwieldy. So I've actually moved over to using a password management tool. Wow. Um, just so it's, you know, a randomly generated password for each new, each new site or login. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's been, it's been fairly successful for me. I haven't had, I haven't had any of my passwords show up in, you know, in the, uh, in, in the big uh, dump list yet. Yeah, <laughs> that's good too. Um, do you go to DEF CON, by the way? I'm, I'm just got a curiosity. 
I do. Yeah. I do. It's it, DEF CON is, is so, always very interesting. So you, um, you've seen the wall of sheep and, uh, you know, or you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always, I always put on my, my uh, out of office email, you know, I say, I'm at DEF CON. I will not be emailing you for three days. <laughs> right? like, I just, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to turn on my phone. I'm going right. to leave everything turned off. There's, exactly. You know, no way I'm communicating with yeah. the outside Take world. Take the battery out of the phone. You know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm tempted to just get one of those old Motorola flip phones you yeah. know, that I just use for, for that three days. Or a burner or, or something. Days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get, get a burner and a burner drone, too, so then we can take it over. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, wow. Um, so, uh, now, so uh, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things. So, tell us a bit more. So, basically, what you do with Intel is you, you deal with security issues uh, with, with all these uh, devices. Is that is that your main focus? Talk a little bit more about what you do with Intel. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm. Um, I, I tend to look into our, you know, to new areas of research uh, for, you know, what are kind of the the areas that we need to look at uh, securing. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a few years ago it was was automotive. Um, now I'm spending spending a lot of time on IoT because I think it's it's an important area, right? I mean, yeah. we, we're we're right now. We were just talking about kind of gifts and and that sort of thing, but I mean, IoT extends into medical devices. Um, extends into critical infrastructure. Uh, it's a it's a very important. Uh, it's going to be a very important cornerstone for technology over the next couple decades. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's something that we need to make sure we're we're securing as, as best as we possibly can. Yeah. No. Uh, you you certainly have a uh, uh, your hands full. I mean, uh, a job <laughs> yeah, for you. No we're, kidding. <laughs> really. Uh, exactly. Uh, anything else? I mean. I mean. We have so many different. Uh, uh, forms of technology. Uh, I assume anything we bring into our home that's connected to the internet. Again, we're talking about the uh, IoT, the Internet of Things. Uh, mm -hmm. Even our thermostats. Uh, uh, I mean, so much is getting connected to the internet now. Our ovens, our refrigerators. I mean, uh -huh. uh, I mean, uh, any any general guidelines that uh, that you might recommend to our listeners uh, for to keep yourself. Say, I mean, are they really in that much danger if, if someone accesses my refrigerator, you know, or my, my, my washer? I'm actually really glad you asked that question. Yeah. Because um, I, I went through that because I just moved back to the U.S. I was in, in Japan for a few years and I was getting a new refrigerator and the option was to have a, an a, a internet enabled refrigerator. And I thought, you know, for a second I thought, oh, that would be really fun. I have no need for it, but it mm -hmm. would be really fun to have. Mm -hmm. Um. And so the first thought, yeah, of course, is, well, so, so what if somebody hacks and, and sees my grocery list or, you know, or, or, or change the, changes the temperature on my wine cooler, mm -hmm. which I guess if you have expensive wine, that would be a big issue. That would be. Um, but I think the bigger problem, and, and not a lot of people really think about it, is that it's not so much hacking that device. It's, it's a, a potential for somebody to get a foothold into your network. Right. So what if someone were to take that, you know, that that wine cooler um, or, you know, or the wine refrigerator or the, the or, or whatever mm -hmm. and install different firmware on there and then turn it into a sniffer? Oh, that's right? not good. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so now you've got now you've got a hostile device yeah. on your network yeah. um, that could be very easily collecting passwords, login information. Um, you know, because you don't think about securing traffic between your own systems at home. No, um, of course not. Because it's a trusted network, right? Right, but exactly. What if, you know, what if that new device that you just brought in is hacked and now you've got a bad guy on your network? Yeah, well, you make it make perfect sense for something like that. So, you know, again, you just have to be aware of these things. You have to be uh, 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 conscientious about it. Is there anywhere that people can go on the Intel website uh, uh, Bruce, where they can find information about this, things that we're talking about? Uh, um. Sure. So if you go to, I think it's, it's blogs.intelsecurity.com, um, you know, and that's where we, we post a lot of our consumer blogs, which I think is probably the most relevant to, 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 to your listeners. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we post a lot of our, you know, our latest discoveries, kind of the new threats that we're seeing. Um, every quarter we put out uh, what we call our quarterly threat report. Uh -huh. And that contains a lot of information from McAfee Labs uh, about kind of the data that we're seeing, the types of attacks that we're seeing, um, and as well as this, this most recent one, uh, we kind of put out a special report where we looked back at 
the five years since Intel acquired uh, McAfee and what has changed from security in that past five years. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of extrapolating and kind of giving our predictions for the next five years. Uh -huh. And so there's a lot of good data and a lot of really interesting things to, sure. to, to think about. And, and the nice thing about the threat report is we bring together a bunch of researchers mm -hmm. uh, to, to put this together. So there are, there are a lot of people a lot smarter than me on that, that, right. uh, <laughs> that, that work on that report as well. So it's, it, you've got a good round, uh, round bit of information. And I, I highly recommend it. It's, it's, a, it's a fun report to read. Excellent. Well, Bruce, uh, we're pretty much out of time. I want to thank you so much for being with us here. Again, Bruce Snell, Director of Technical Solutions for Intel Security. Uh, I guess there's always someone out there that's smarter than you, you know, as they say. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and just right. try to be the, as best prepared as you can. Bruce, thank you again for being with us here on the show. It was a real pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Again, Intel uh, with us here and uh, talking about, uh, uh, we talked about the Thunderbolt 3 and we talked about the security of uh, wearable devices and more. Uh, and thanks to Intel for being with us here in this hour. Coming up, uh, we're going to be talking to Mushroom Networks about voice over IP technology. It's here. It's now. We're going to talk more about it with the company CEO. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. Okay. And uh, we just had uh, Intel here on the show. Uh, again, if you miss any portion of that, you certainly can listen to it. We archive all of our shows at ComputerAmerica.com. Uh, just go to the archive uh, uh, selection on the menu. It's on every page at ComputerAmerica.com, and check it out for yourself. Again, thanks to Intel, Jason uh, Ziller, uh, Intel's Director of Thunderbolt Marketing, and Bruce Nell, uh, Director of Technical Solutions for Intel Security. Thanks to both of them for being here on the uh, program. So now we're going to kind of switch gears. Let me just tell you that uh, we're going to open up the phones if you have any questions for our next guest, 347 884 8881. That's 347 884 8881. I'll get you on and get you through. Uh, if you're radio shy, you don't want to go on the air, just head over to, again, any page at computeramerica.com. And uh, just uh, on the upper right hand corner, you'll see it says submit a question. Just click that link, it'll take you to our question submission page. You can type in your question. Uh, hit the submit button, and Ben and I will see uh, everything that's going on there as well. Also, if you uh, want to watch our live video stream, we have live video here at ComputerAmerica.com. Again, at the Internet home of Computer America, which is ComputerAmerica.com. Just go to the show lounge. Again, on any page, just click it, and you'll be able to see as well as hear the program. Ben has the technology display uh, websites, images, movies, videos, so it just makes for a, a more rich experience. So that said, uh, we're going to move on into the second hour of the program. And uh, uh, we have Mushroom Networks. Now, Mushroom Networks uh, is a company with a mission to provide innovative networking solutions. Uh, their products and services are focused on a range of networking solutions for enterprises and small to medium-sized biz businesses in various industries. Uh, their solutions bridge the technology gap to the future by enabling applications today that are otherwise not possible. Uh, Mushroom Network's products are based on the unique and patent-pending broadband bonding technology developed by their engineering team through extensive research and development. Now, here today uh, to discuss a voice over Internet protocol, or we better know one as VoIP technology, is the CEO of Mushroom Network's Dr. Kahit J. Aiken. Uh, Jay, uh, welcome into Computer America. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Craig. Uh, so I, I gave an overview of what much I know we're going to kind of fo focus on voice over IP, but why don't you tell uh, just a little bit about what your company does uh, and what this broadband bonding technology is all about? Sure. Uh, our company's mission is really uh, to uh, provide excellent 
internet experience to our users. And there are various ways uh, we do this, but primarily our appliances uh, that uh, uh, get installed in a network has the capability to uh, continuously measure and optimize uh, the flows, the internet flows, for uh, uh, increasing the performance of specific applications. Okay. So in a, in, in a more concrete example, if uh, you're using one of our broadband bonding appliances, you'll be able to combine two or more internet lines into a fatter pipe and therefore have faster uploads, faster downloads, uh, basically get overall faster speed, mm -hmm. as well as the added reliability. Because now you're not relying on a single connection in terms of being connected uh, into the internet. So what does is, what is your device do? And, and again, I know I'm going to focus on uh, uh, voice over IP, but I'm kind of curious about the truffle. And tell us a little bit about what these devices do. How do they, how do they give you, do they give you more broadband with what you, with the existing broadband? I mean, what do they do? Can kind of give, give us a little Yeah, question. I think it, the way I, I like to explain it is, is almost, almost with a uh, interstate highway analogy. So okay. if you have your single let's say DSL line or your cable line or your fiber link or T1, mm -hmm. what have you, you can look at that as a single lane uh, and, and all your traffic will go over that line. Uh, with broadband bonding, what you can do is you can bring in more lines to a specific location oh. and they can be either more DSL lines or you can mix and match different carriers. Ah, okay. Basically, similar to adding more lanes to the interstate, and therefore, now you can push more cars, meaning IP packets, mm -hmm. uh, through that connectivity because of the broadband bonding that uh, is, technology that's embedded in that. That is so incredibly clever. I mean, I, I hadn't thought of that, uh, uh, Jay, but that, that, that makes, certainly makes a lot of sense. If I, if I can get the fastest, let's say, is a, a cable modem you know, into, into the location, um, and that's all I can get, but then I, I can say, well, I, I can get DSL, and I can get this, and, but I need a way of bonding them together and making them cumulative so at the bottom line is I get more speed that's what uh, your truffle does uh, it, it allows you to use several different uh, tech uh, technologies all coming to the same place and bonding them together when the when the final result is just a is a, is a bigger pipe yeah yeah and actually this has been um, uh, really a concept that has been tried uh, with different approaches before for example your your carrier it's not so much um, known in in us but in in certain parts of of, of, of the world they have tried uh, implementing this idea of bringing multiple resources mm -hmm. at the carrier level meaning let's say someone like at&t would bring in uh, their equipment to their central office and embed uh, the matching technology in the modem therefore they can uh, implement those uh, bonding concepts but the problem there was always technically uh, it's a forklift Upgrade. So you, uh, the carrier needs to go out and change the um, uh, what they call the D slams, which is the yes. <laughs> uh, racks in the point point of sale, uh, the uh, point of presence, and that is really expensive. Yeah. So what we've done, uh, the the unique approach here is implementing the same aggregation concept as an overlay. So if you do it at an IP layer, at, at a higher layer. Uh, you all of a sudden uh, can take advantage of the routing capabilities of the internet, mm -hmm. and you don't need to go to the DSLAM. You can put it in a data center and service many, many uh, thousands of clients from a single instance. So it all of a sudden makes the rollout extremely easy, and it really pushes it from a carrier-provided service to a appliance-driven functionality that an end user can implement themselves, so to speak. Yeah. No, that 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 really is. Uh, uh, you make it a lot more clear now, and uh, and again, you can see all the different uh, products that we're talking about here today at uh, mushroomnetworks.com, uh, and uh, or just go to computeramerica.com. You can see everything. So, you know, and it seems like everything is moving to IP, and I say I, that's internet protocol. I mean, we have shopping, we've got video watching, listening to music. Now, it's never been more convenient to be a shut in. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and I have to say, um, I use uh, 
voice over internet protocol. Again, VoIP for short. And uh, I happen to use a service called UMA, which I absolutely love. I don't know if you're familiar or have heard of it, uh, Jay. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, I mean, it's absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's wonderful. I remember when when VoIP first came out, it was so sketchy, and you had to have a computer, and it was iffy at best. And then I sort of watched the the technology progress. Uh, and now it's at a point where the, the, the internet speeds had to catch up. They just weren't there. Yeah, yeah. But but now that they have, I mean, I don't, I don't use landlines anymore. I don't need a landline. I, I, uh, I know a lot of people use their cell phone as a landline, but I have to tell you that using a voice over IP, not only is the voice quality just as good, if not better, uh, I can do things that I couldn't do with my standard you know, landline uh, uh, um, service that I had from like the AT&T. You have so many more abilities. Um, yep. Let's talk a little bit about uh, t talk a little bit more about that, Jay. Yeah, and I I think you you nailed it in terms of uh, everything moving uh, to IP. That certainly happens with uh, happened with voice applications as well, and it started in the core of, core of the network. So uh, carriers, the the voice service providers started to uh, change their backend systems to support VoIP uh, early on. And then it's slowly but surely progressed towards the edges, all the way to the uh, consumers as well as uh, business applications as well. And it's it's getting to a point now uh, where uh, VoIP is is going to be the only uh, voice application uh, that uh, people use. Uh, although, when you uh, oddly enough, when you look into some of the research studies. Uh, there is still a significant portion of uh, the people, and this is uh, probably slightly different between residential and uh, enterprise, but if you look at the numbers, they still, the IT manager still has some plans to include legacy transports like, uh, such as uh, ISDN and T1 in oh. some cases, which, which are really older non-VoIP type approaches. When you say ISDN, and, when you say ISDN, oh my gosh, that takes me back. I mean, I had to use ISDN for a while, and and, and uh, what was so talk, talk about dead technology because I think only like one person in every state is allowed to work on it anymore. Yeah, first of all, you have it's a separate office with a separate staff with separate different types of equipment and only serviceable in certain areas. I think I think the broadcast media was is the last bastion of, of ISDN, but uh, I mean, the most you got was like 64 or 54, 64, uh, and you had to combine a yep. lot, the A and the, the B lines, and uh, it was, and it required highly specialized equipment to use it, and uh, what a mess, and, uh, yep. Yep. and uh, you know. But, uh, Craig, it has, it had one thing going for it, and it was the extreme reliability. Yes. That's really the yeah, uh, I would say the primary difference in in terms of uh, even in, in terms of a theoretical approach, when you're talking IP, you, you're you're a, a, a packet switched, meaning mm -hmm. you're not relying on a dedicated point-to-point -point connectivity. Uh, all the links or most of the connections between point A and B will be shared by other applications. Uh, will be used uh, by other resources. So it is uh, in a way can 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 be less reliable because you're not dedicating a point-to-point -point transport, mm -hmm. but it is way more uh, efficient and cost-effective. So it has a huge pull towards that. So that basically is the only, I would say, remaining uh, shortcoming of VoIP. Yeah. Uh, because when you're doing web surfing, when you're doing a file transfer, you don't even notice if there are packets missing no. because the underlying TCP protocol will recover that. And before you know it, your file is downloaded. But in VoIP, the yeah. human ear is really susceptible for packet loss, jitter, latency, sure. some of these naturally occurring artifacts, let's call them, mm -hmm. in the in the public internet. Yeah. And so I think that's why uh, people are still considering in in scenarios where they have to have uptime, where a hundred percent of the time, and they cannot really risk. Uh, any sort of uh, problems with their specific voice application. Right. I, I will grant you that. ISDN was extremely reliable. I think in all the years I was using it, I think I maybe lost the connection once. I mean, that's how, yep. how rock solid it was. But but to get it in place, and ah, uh, that was just horrible. Uh, but, but as you say, I mean, 
look, the, 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 when you speak, when you're using voice over IP, the, when you're hearing the spoken word, obviously if a syllable of that word drops out, you're going to hear it, you know, and so it's going to it's going to sound broken. I mean, we're using VoIP right now. Uh, we are network network line is using VoIP, and and it's extremely clear. And we're actually uh, in the next uh, a few weeks, we're going to be switching over to a, what they call a higher definition audio version of the of VoIP. Mm -hmm. So it's going to even be more clear than it is now. But so I guess that's why humans care about call quality. I mean, uh, I mean that's I think the last bastion is is voice. And uh, although things like UMA, for example, they um, they have high definition audio in place now, you really get great sounding. I mean, the audio yep. sounds really, really good. Um, um, That's the big advantage of uh, IP because it really uh, uh, extends itself to have this. Uh, I guess you can call them variety of applications or extensions to uh, just bump up the bit rate for HD voice uh, add certain different applications on top. For example, there are great uh, services out there that integrates your uh, phone with your maybe uh, online address book. Uh, so it really uh, takes advantage of that all IP architecture, which you can't do really with the legacy older system. Oh, no. I mean, I, I have services and features just on the UMA alone that I, I could never do on a, on, a, on a regular standard landline phone. I mean, I mean uh, uh, I'm talking about, you know, uh, more than call waiting and call forwarding. I, uh, there's the, you can, you, I mean, you can have special, you know, numbers that will make the phone ring differently. I mean, you have all kinds of features that you just couldn't have on, on a standard AT&T or uh, standard landline. And again, that's because of the flexibility uh, of, of what voice over IP uh, does. Uh, it's just uh, it's a wonderful uh, service, and, and it, it continues to improve. Uh, the, uh, the call quality yep. continues to improve. And the next iteration is actually applying the same uh, values and concepts to uh, cellular LTE networks as well, a voice over LTE or Volte, they're calling. And, and that's it, it, actually it, it, the same uh, idea where you instead of using a dedicated uh, phone channel uh, even though it's it's cellular it's still dedicated uh, you'll be able to now utilize the data channel which is packet switched uh, from your phone to uh, the, the the network and therefore you're going over LTE so that has a couple of advantages uh, first of all uh, it's a, a more cost-effective way of delivering voice and Secondly, you can uh, do the same type of uh, additional value propositions such as HD voice. So all of a sudden, right. uh, your cell phone will start to uh, sound uh, incredibly high quality as well. Yeah, no, uh, and it's uh, certainly, uh, certainly uh, uh, that's very true. I mean, I mean, one of the main things they say, well, why voice over IP? Why, 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 why? And, and I think, well, first of all, uh, many services, when you have voice over IP, the cost of your phone call, Goes way down. Yep. In some cases, zero. Uh, some companies will, you know, you 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 buy the equipment and uh, and then you never pay for a phone line again. You can call long distance. Uh, there no there are no monthly service charges. Uh, I mean, some of them work that way. I mean, that's but but of course like, there the, there has to be a trade off somewhere. And uh, I I you know I honestly don't know off the top of my head. And I'm wondering if you do, uh, Jay, if. Uh, what what are the data uh, associated with this? I, I mean, is it a is it a high data user? Uh, I'm sorry, high data usage device. No, you, you mean in terms of the VoIP application, right? Right, right. Yeah, for, uh, VoIP is is really if you if you look at an average uh, VoIP uh, connection, uh, it, it, I would say the average is around eighty kilobits per second. Uh, in in today's day and age is is really nothing. So right. in terms of uh, the total uh, uh, cost of delivering those bits, it's negligible. That's why you see uh, these services where you have a let's say an upfront cost for an equipment and you get unlimited uh, phone calls for life. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 that's a huge difference. So instead of dedicating a whole transport, uh, you're able to now share so to speak, resources with other applications, with other calls. It's even in terms of number of simultaneous calls. Let's say if you're a call center or, or even an enterprise where you have 
multiple people making phone calls simultaneously. You do care about how efficient uh, your uh, uh, phone uh, traffic is. And with VoIP, uh, it's it's basically an app you can can trade off quality with uh, efficiency. So you can drop it even as as low as uh, 10 kilobits per second if you want to. Right, because voice, you know, voice is probably the least demanding. I mean, even music is more demanding than voice. I mean, voice is can be, is uh, you really don't have to have a very uh, steady stream to uh, have a good delivery of quality of of the spoken word. Um, I think yeah, you, you, and the interesting thing there is actually there is a uh, industry standard way of quantifying uh, the quality. Mm-hmm. And it's called a mean opinion score, MOS. And what that does is it, it gives uh, the uh, a specific VoIP stream a number. It associates a number, zero to five, five being the best quality, uh, zero being the worst. Uh, and, and you can literally plug in a certain metrics of the network. And these are, for example, packet loss, latency, jitter, and, and some second uh, order uh, uh, parameters that affect voice and calculate what type of a um, most score that communication will get. So in terms of bandwidth, your requirement is really, really low. But in terms of uh, certain metrics, for example, latency and packet loss, it's really vulnerable. Uh, in terms of uh, quality, so you you really have to have a clean, and it's it's really not that difficult to get into a situation like that. For example, you're making a Skype uh, or an UMA call, and then uh, let's say your kid starts downloading a large file. <laughs> if you don't have the appropriate setup, uh, all of a sudden the call quality will uh, suffer tremendously. Well, well don't they have? Uh, you mentioned some. Of, aren't there certain algorithms that have been developed? I know UMA has developed some to to. To uh, I mean, for certain re- redundancy issues, where uh, so if something gets dropped, you don't really hear it. I mean, that they they make up for it in some way, so you get a, you yeah, s- certainly. So as there far are, as you- there are a lot yeah. of interesting uh, ideas and co- uh, technologies that are implemented that are trying to conceal any type of packet loss, and those are the times when you uh, start to hear the voice a little bit more tinny. Uh, I'm sure you, you experienced that, man. Mm-hmm. And there are packet loss. The system will try to gap that and make, quote unquote, guesses about what what that uh, voice might sound like. Uh, so there are ways of uh, trying to conceal that. And actually, uh, at Mushroom Networks, that was one of the uh, driving um, uh, motivations behind our uh, latest product as well, which which relies on adding uh, and managing multiple. Uh, links so that your voice call never goes down. So I think the industry is certainly uh, pushing uh, to solve that last final uh, remaining quote unquote challenge where uh, you can safely turn to any user, consumer or or enterprise and say, hey, you can cut the cord because the uh, VoIP system you uh, you will use is going to be better than a dedicated line. No, I'm sure you know. I mean, all this kind of came about with the consumer products. I think Magic Jack was one of the the first ones that out there. You know, you plug it into your computer, and all of a sudden, you, and you put a phone to it, and you hear you, you take any standard telephone, plug it into the Magic Jack, and you hear a dial tone. You know, and then they went, then the, and yep. then uh, NetTalk did the same thing, and then they went to a wireless version, so you could have your telephone, you know, anywhere. You didn't have to be in the same room where your router was located. It worked wirelessly. I mean, they they keep making improvements over Wi-Fi, yep. you know, over Wi-Fi, uh, and then. Uh, uh, and of course, I mentioned the UMA. There are there are a number of them out that are consumer uh, versions. Uh, does Mike Mushroom Networks make a consumer version, or do you are you making the equipment uh, for companies that provide VoIP? Uh, could you kind of clarify on we, that? Yeah, we primarily focus on enterprise markets. Uh, mm-hmm. Having said that, we certainly have uh, some consumers, and those are usually uh, home office type applications mm-hmm. where they really rely on having a. Uh, voice communication that never goes down, zero downtime, and the voice quality is very important. Maybe they're part of a sales team or maybe uh, it's it's supporting their clients or something like that. So they have to have a, a high level of uh, uh, image towards their uh, clients. So in those cases, we see some consumer applications as well. But I think that's a, this, uh, a, a clear distinction between VoIP in 
uh, the eyes of consumers as, uh, as opposed to the enterprise. For consumer applications, I think it's more tolerable. At least uh, I feel that way. If my, let's say, Skype call suffers here and there and I, I had to redial <laughs> a second later, it might be fine, right? Because I'm all of a sudden moving from a specific monthly fee from my local carrier to a either free or close to free mm -hmm. voice system, and that's totally acceptable. But I think on the enterprise side, uh, which is the part we're, we're uh, basically addressing the problem for, uh, it's less uh, acceptable. Because if, if you have downtime uh, or if you have uh, quality issues, uh, it's a showstopper. And no. I think that's why yeah. still a, a significant portion of the IT departments are still planning to have, of course, they're planning VoIP, uh, but they are also planning on uh, having some rollouts that rely on these uh, legacy uh, transports, which which is crazy, I think, because we, we, we have to uh, put them to bed already and move all 100% VoIP. There's no reason that, sh that can't be done in this day and age. I would think so. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I mean, I used to pay, you know, like uh, uh, I had uh, oh, two phone lines in my home, and and I was paying somewhere about two hundred fifty dollars a month just for long distance and 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 the equipment, and you know, every time you added a, a touch star service on AT and T, oh, that's another twenty bucks, and it's another, you know, yeah, and, and and I was. You know, and I wasn't making calls overseas. I was just making this easy, and so I was paying two hundred forty, two hundred fifty dollars a month just for my phone service. And that all went away. Yep. That one all went away when I switched over to a, a voiceover, when I went over to a NUMA system. It, it all, I mean, there was the initial, you bought the equipment, which was like about 200 some odd dollars, and, and, uh, and then it went away. Uh, I didn't have that anymore. And so it's just... Uh, but but it's, you're saying that, 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 you know, and of course, Craig, you know, is of course a small business, but for, you know, it, we have specialty needs, but for larger businesses, like, uh, how how big would you say this uh, voice over IP can scale up? Can it scale up to, uh -huh. I don't want to say call centers because it's you know kind of crazy, but uh, you know, twenty employees, fifty employees. How how big can voice IP over IP scale up? Yeah, it, it definitely can scale up uh, as a function of your available bandwidth. Really, your uh, because IP PVXs, which which is basically the uh, phone systems. Uh, brain, so to speak, which manages uh, the phones, IP phones that are connecting to it, as well as the uh, what they call the SIP trunks, uh, basically the uh, data connection uh, from the IPPVX to the uh, internet telephony service provider. Uh, those are all uh, scalable as long as you have enough bandwidth, as well as uh, as long as you manage uh, the simultaneous calls intelligently. So uh, in terms of scalability, uh, the sky is the limit as long as you have enough bandwidth. Yeah. Now, you started to talk a little bit about some of the differences or similarities uh, when you see voice, voice over IP when used by consumer applications versus enterprise applications. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about some of these differences and similarities? Sure. Uh, I think on the uh, consumer uh, applications, uh, we see uh, a large variety where you can certainly have physical IP phones that you connect to your network, mm -hmm. uh, but there is also a, a large population that uses VoIP technology on their uh, computers, laptops, and tablets as well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think it's, that application is less common in uh, enterprises as the primary uh, phone system. Mm -hmm. uh, usually on the enterprise side, you uh, do have a centralized uh, PBX phone system. And I shouldn't call it centralized because there are also hosted PBX solutions out there as well. And those are uh, companies providing uh, PBX functionality in the cloud. It's, it's a basically software as a service applied to phone systems. Uh, really smart, great idea. All, all you need is your internet connection to connect to that service and your IP phones. Uh, the second, uh, I would say, uh, major difference is, and you, you touched on it as well, the scale uh, of uh, the um, total uh, bandwidth of, of the systems. In, in a consumer level, you're looking at uh, at most several simultaneous calls. In enterprise, you have to really plan 
and manage the total simultaneous uh, call volume mm -hmm. uh, because you have to plan ahead and have enough uh, bandwidth. Otherwise, you will be dropping calls and, and sure. get busy signals and things like that. Uh, uh, I would say those are the ma major parts. And the third one is uh, the uh, security aspect. Uh, in, in any other application, of course, enterprises will be more sensitive to security. Uh, so uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a good chance you, you may have installed an uh, FBC uh, in your network, which manages, uh, uh, among other things, the security part of your uh, uh, voice communication. Right. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we're coming to the about on the hour, so, and I have uh, uh, several more questions that I want to ask you, Jay, so uh, we're, we're going to come back to you uh, in, in a few minutes, so if uh, you would just stay by, stand by and we'll continue on with you, all right? Uh, we're, we're listening to the uh, Computer America Show. Uh, ben and I are talking to the CEO of Mushroom Networks, Dr. Jay Aiken, and we're kind of focusing on voice over IP technology. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the Volte, okay, what that is, uh, and we'll get it. And also, what's new for voice over IP. This might be the time to not only cut the cable or cut the cord for your TV, it looks like it might be time to cut the cord for your telephone, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is the Computer America Show. Uh, we've got another uh, news tips bulletin review uh, from Marty Winston coming up. And then we'll be back with Dr. Jake Aiken from Mushroom Networks. You listen to the Computer America Show. Please stay with us. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule. Your company's getting ready for its IPO. And you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. The mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control, where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door-to-door, -door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at-risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community-based approach to no kill helps keep family pets healthy happy and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place for more information or to make a tax deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization visit their website at www.bwar.org help to realize brother wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home who's a good boy <laughs> Kidding me? These days I bet Shemp could run for office. Marty Winston with a News Tips Bullet Review for Computer America, this time the Coast LK375 Light Knight. When something needs to be cut, doing that in the dark is never a good choice, and it seems like two hands are seldom enough to get the job done right. Coast sent their LK375 Light Knife, a wide blade knife on a handle that's been oversized to fit a 110 lumen flashlight they say can run up to four hours on a AAA cell. A big thumb hole in the top of the blade lets you open it with either hand. The flashlight button is press for momentary, press again for low mode, press and click for full on in either mode. The curved bottom blade has an aggressive serrate in its back inch. Bottom line, a Coast LK375 light knife is a great answer when you also have to cut through the dark. Marty Winston, News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. 
No, you're you're muted. <laughs> I am so good at this. My God, why do I why, why don't I get more awards? This is this is mind boggling. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, we are talking to Mushroom Networks right now. Uh, the CEO, Mr. Jay Akin, is here with Doc, us. Doc Doctor Doctor Jay Akin. Yes. yes. Uh, doctor in computer science. Uh, in electrical engineering, actually, oh, wow. electrical engineering, and computer science. Ve even better. Um, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah, we're talking all about voice over IP. Uh, you should definitely go over to Mushroom Network and you know check out everything that we're talking about because it's very very cool technology that uh, we haven't really covered here on the show before, and that's saying something because we cover a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, and uh, we're we're right in the middle of it, and. As far as new technology goes, voice over IP has, of course, been in people's homes for a while now. But there's a new, uh, I guess you would call it uh, a protocol. Uh, what is this new uh, Volte, V-O-L-T-E? Uh, what is this all about? Sure, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, it, it, when you look at the uh, cellular networks uh, to this day, the voice, uh, unless you're doing uh, some VoIP application on your phone, such as Skype uh, or Google Voice or something like that, normally your uh, uh, 3G, 4G phone calls uh, would go over the uh, dedicated voice channel uh, of that uh, right. transport. Uh, with vo and, and you also have your data channel, the LTE channel, uh, sitting there for your data applications. Uh, but uh, uh, there is now uh, the new technology called Voice over LTE or Volte, uh, which is very similar to Voice over IP, where you are uh, digitizing your voice and putting it over the uh, IP uh, layer. Uh, same thing uh, is going to be done uh, through LTE, where the VoIP packets will travel uh, over the LTE data channel as opposed to uh, the dedicated voice channel that your cell phone has, don't uh, and and uh, get to the network that way. Don't we see that happen? Don't we? Don't we see that happening now? Because you can get Skype on your cellular phone. They have an app for your your smartphone, yep. and, and when you're when you're near a Wi-Fi network, you can use your Skype on your smartphone to make a voice over IP call. Is that still voice over IP or is that Volte? That's voice over IP. Okay. Uh, so the, the difference is when you when you start to do uh, Volte, and, and this is uh, primarily going to be driven by uh, the service providers as well, uh, all of a sudden you have the capabilities of making seamless handovers. So what that means is you, may, you, you, you might be uh, uh, basically driving into your garage, uh, going over the voice over LTE, uh, and then you come into your home and your voice communication without you dropping the call might switch over to your Wi-Fi ah. and go over your wired internet line. And all of a sudden, it, of course, it's seamless to the end user, but you have that seamless handover. I mean, today, uh, this is uh, really not in, in terms of clean implementation. I don't think anything uh, is, is uh, fully out there yet. Uh, I know, for example, uh, Google has the Google Fi project. Uh, where uh, uh, you 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 can do some switch over between yeah. uh, different carriers and things like that. Yeah, we uh, but th this is mm -hmm. we reported on that uh, a few weeks back. Yeah, exactly uh, that ability. Yep. Uh, but uh, it's not yeah, mainstream. Yeah. It's not mainstream yet. No, it is not. And I, I but I think uh, some of these uh, seamless uh, uh, handovers, and because at the end of the day, it will make the end user experience. So much better, right? You 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 you're walking in and you don't care about uh, your coverage. I know, for example, some of the carriers have. Actually, I ordered one for for myself. Uh, the indoor uh, micro cells where you can put in um, a, a mini cell tower, basically, literally in your house, where you connect your wired internet into it, and then uh, uh, your cell phone can talk Volte to that mini cell tower and go over the internet. And so this, I think, will be an ongoing trend where uh, these applications, which makes the which make the experience of the end user much more seamless and fluid. What's uh, what's the 
what's the advantage? I mean, are we, is it getting like voice over P when you go over Volte, uh, that you're, you're spending less money? I mean, you're not eating into your cellular, uh, um, uh, uh, time. <laughs> what, what's going on? What's that's, going a, that's, on? A, that's a good question because I, I think it's all in terms of how, uh, it trickles down to the end consumer is still going to be a function of the service provider. It will definitely cost less, uh, to the, uh, service providers to carry your voice over, Volte as opposed to a dedicated line because they'll be able to squeeze in more simultaneous calls from a given cell sector, mm -hmm. so which means, of course, uh, lower cost for them. Uh, and I, it, it must trickle down to uh, the end user reflected in the price as well. And, and same thing goes on for uh, the uh, uh, Pico cell approach as well because uh, literally uh, they are now able to enlarge their network by taking advantage of uh, their clients uh, real estate right so it's basically you're putting it in your house and now there is another uh, uh, cell tower so to speak uh, in that area mm -hmm. okay so uh, it may the cost drop might not be as dramatic as users as consumers users with VoIP I mean because VoIP it went down from you know Hundreds of dollars to yeah. like like nothing, you know. Uh, whereas with Volte, right. you're not going to see that immediately. You might have the convenience uh, of you know swap, although you won't even be aware that it's happening. Uh, that unless you look at maybe the little icon in the upper left hand corner of your phone, you'll see it switched from AT and T to you know Wi-Fi or some other symbol uh, if you're on Volte. Yep. But but. Uh, yeah, I, I think one of the difference uh, that, that the consumers will definitely uh, realize will be the voice quality. Okay. Because now uh, you have the data channel where you can enlarge uh, the bit rate of your ah. uh, codec. And you'll, you'll be able to, for example, do HD voice uh, over LTE. And that will translate into really crystal clear voice. Uh, I guess you can call, call that a... Uh, dropping cost. If if the prices don't go higher, at least you you're getting more value out of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, uh, that that one connection to the internet is replacing so many more things. The that be utility. It's replacing you know uh, the TV line. It's replacing that now the 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 phone line. Uh, it's it's uh, we're, we're more and more things are coming into our homes via the internet connection than you know than anything else. Uh, obviously, we're gonna still need you're gonna you're gonna need electricity and gas and water, but <laughs> other than your, uh, but so many of the the services that we've used are now coming to us via the internet, um, and uh, and I guess it's all about smart smart handling of those packets because you don't want you know you don't want the fact that you have voice over that you have voice over IP running, you know you don't want that to you know kind of affect your TV quality or your internet connection. Like, you know, it's all about, you know, the more and more data, if you don't keep it all neat, orderly, and, you know, keep it flowing well, then everything's going to suffer. So tell us a little yep. bit, tell us a little bit about, uh, again, VoIP, the voice over IP or voice over internet pro protocol. Uh, I just say VoIP today, uh, but tell us about VoIP Armor. You know, this is a product that you have at Mushroom Network. So tell us about it and maybe tell us why should one get one of these? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So VoIP Armor, we really designed this product for uh, businesses who want to uh, take their uh, voice communication that they are already using uh, with any VoIP system and make it bulletproof in terms of uh, reliability and quality. And the way we do this is, as, as I was referring earlier, uh, the only, I think, missing piece or the remaining hurdle uh, for businesses to fully 100% uh, go over to VoIP is uh, the remaining problem of reliability. If, for example, your internet line suffers because of cross traffic in the core network, or it might be some local uh, networking issue, uh, it might be packet loss, it might be latency, whatever that might be, uh, it uh, uh, brings the voice quality, or in some cases, the voice call uh to, to to a crawl and and that's unacceptable for businesses so what we've uh, built with voip armor is a small uh, de uh desktop form factor appliance which has 
uh, four ports. So you'll be able to plug in up to four different internet lines. By the way, one of them can be an LTE cellular link as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the system uh, automatically detects uh, VoIP packets that are directed onto it. And it uh, does what we call network coding before it sends it out over the network. And it takes advantage of uh, the links uh, depending on the best quality at any given time. So, for example, uh, if, if a business has a DSL line, a cable line, uh, maybe they have their MPLS in there, and then a failover line for, for cellular, uh, the system at any given moment uh, will be sending the voice. On the show. Uh, uh, listen, uh, again. Very uh, informative, though. Yeah, very. Dr. Jay Aiken, again, with the co-founder co -founder and CEO of Mushroom Networks. Again, thank you so much for being with us here today on Computer America. It was a pleasure. Likewise. All right. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. There you go. Uh, again, uh, Mushroom Networks. You can check it out at ComputerAmerica.com or you can go to MushroomNetworks.com. But you go to our homepage at ComputerAmerican.com and check it out for yourself. Again, uh, I want to thank Intel for being with us here in the first hour of the show. We had Jason Ziller, Intel's director of Thunderbolt Marketing. We were talking about Thunderbolt 3 technology. Just takes your breath away. 40 gigabits per second up and down. I mean, just amazing. Uh, I mean, really, w when you start talking about these speeds, uh, you know, with the connection between the hardware and you take something like, uh, you know, one gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second internet connection that some places in the world have, you start to see just a glimpse of what the future is going to be for people. I, I mean, it's not, you know, nowadays... I feel like a lot of people have constraints by, you know, what they can do because of the limit of data and the amount of data that they can download and use and upload. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you know, if the future is full of 40 gigs, you know, simultaneously up and down mm -hmm. and full of 10 gigabit per second Internet connection, mm -hmm. that's going to change a lot uh, about how we consume and just what we do with data. Yeah. And data and data in all of its glory, whether it be a. Uh, Images, movies, videos, voice. For, uh, you know, 4K video, virtual yeah. reality, doesn't matter. It, it's all going to be, you know, the the, ban the pipelines are going to be, you know, big enough that it's going to be able to handle anything. And and I like that. Yeah. And again, also thanks to uh, uh, Bruce Snell, who was with the, uh, who was the director of technical solutions for Intel Security. Uh, talking about the holiday gift items and the Internet of Things and the security all associated to that. Again, thanks to both of those uh, gentlemen for being with us here on the uh, program. Uh, coming up on tomorrow's show, Monsieur Gagné, Marcel Gagné is going to be here. He is our Linux correspondent and Linux expert, and it's all about Linux everything about Linux and more. We're going to be talking about different li Linux distributions, uh, Linux in the news. Uh, we've got all kinds of things and uh, happening there. And, of course, we'll have a link up to the uh, cheat notes. So if you want to follow along with Marcel, he's also going to have his wine of the month, which I think, which I understand this time isn't really a wine. It's cognac. <laughs> which is a type of wine. It's just been triple distilled, so it brings it down to And he'll explain all of that. Uh, as well, Marcel Gagne is always a lot easily of easily one of the easily one of the booziest shows we have here on the show. Yeah, he's he's very entertaining, a lot of fun, and uh, just a great all around guy. And uh, uh, we always enjoy having him here on the program. So Marcel Gagne, uh, both hours of Computer America dedicated to the subject of Linux. So if you have any interest in the topic of Linux, and I don't see why you shouldn't. I mean, Linux is everywhere. Let's face it, Linux runs the internet. Uh, I mean, it's in devices in your home that you might not even realize. Uh, 60 it's everywhere. seconds. Make sure you tune that show in tomorrow. Again, thanks to all of you for being with us here on today's show. It's a lot of fun. And uh, Ben and I will see you here. Same place, same time, same station. Oh, and don't forget that our... Uh, our contest, our social media contest is happening this Friday. Make sure you go to ComputerAmerica.com and register to win that Logitech Anywhere MX2 wireless mouse valued at $80. Check it out. We could be calling your name if you register. It's just that simple. So about wraps it up. So until tomorrow afternoon, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Have a good one, everyone.
Thank you. And don't forget CES. <laughs> Very true. Seconds. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Okay. Again, thanks everybody for watching our live video stream. And uh, Ben and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. and the Absolutely. the technologies that have been used for uh, you know a couple hundred years uh, is basically you know destined for obsolescence at least as that it appears yeah. to me that way uh, they just have to at least get to the level of the uh, of the landline uh, this uh, the reliability of landline and devices like yours is helping voip achieve that level of reliability uh, certainly, yep. and, and so, so I think as more and more consumers get VoIP, I mean, it would be nice, you know. Oh, you can go, you know, for for forty nine ninety five, you can pick up, you know, the Mushroom Network's uh, VoIP, you know, Gizmo, whatever you want to name it, put it to your telephone, and it's going. You're going to get, you know, one hundred percent assured that you're going to get no more drops. I mean, I can see something like that, that like that being marketed. I mean, do you? Yeah. And then, Craig, the reason we we started with with the enterprise uh, application is really uh, historically that has been our expertise. There is no reason, uh, as you're suggesting, this technology uh, can't be used in, in in consumers. Okay, so that said, can you talk a little bit of what's new for VoIP going forward for you uh, and for VoIP in general? We got about five yeah, minutes I, left. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think the uh, we will see uh, we'll probably continue to see uh, more and more integration in the enterprise with uh, other IP applications. I mean, there's certainly uh, a good number of applications already, uh, but moving towards uh, uh, other uh, integration, including uh, video as well, because when once you move on to IP. Uh, the difference between VoIP and video is just in terms of uh, different bandwidth, right? Yeah, it's all packets data, going through. Exactly. So I think integration and um, uh, this allowing, especially if uh, as VoIP becomes more and more rock solid, uh, moving to uh, fully IP-based PBXs, uh, what they call IP PBXs, mm -hmm. Uh, meaning, uh, it, 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 to this day, there's a lot of PBXs that uh, use VoIP, uh, but they still have some analog line options as well uh, because of the reliability uh, issues. Uh, I think over time, as that problem is solved by the industry, uh, those will disappear, and we, we start. We're going to continue moving towards a full 100% VoIP approach. That opens up really interesting, I think, uh, new directions. Once you have all IP, uh, and there are certainly services and companies uh, providing these already, uh, you can move that PBX functionality in, in the cloud, into the cloud. So you'll, you'll have your IP PBX, let's say you're a company uh, and you, you do not need to purchase, manage and maintain uh, a PBX phone system like before. Uh, you can just subscribe to one of these PBX, cloud-based PBX services mm -hmm. and get full functionality, PBX functionality out of that service. So I think that's a continued uh, trend uh, I'm expecting. Again, similar to Volti and uh, coming into the wired VoIP as well, I think more and more seamless uh, experience for voice communication, you leaving your office, uh, moving from your wired phone, perhaps with a click of a button to your cell phone, your cell phone acting as a uh, your office phone, all these uh, seamless connectivity uh, and seamless handovers, I think is a trend uh, that, I, that I anticipate uh, anticipate getting more and more adoption in the, in the market. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think uh, as voice over IP really comes into its own, uh, and, and the quality of the, of the call uh, rivals that of the... Uh, 
switched. That was the term, the switched services that uh, that uh, have been right. traditional for They're, landlines. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, we're going to see, I, I think in the next 10, 15 years, we're going to see a lot of that just phased out for only the most uh, oh esoteric of applications, you know, um, uh, and you're going to have to probably pay a premium price for them because uh, they're 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 going to be such so antiquated. Uh, yeah, no one will understand them, right? Yeah, <laughs> really, exactly. You'll get to the point where no one will understand them anymore because they're just too old. You know, uh, uh, you know, it's really it's like how vacuum tubes basically disappeared from our our our, our world. I mean, now you're going to make a comeback. You just wait. <laughs> I've seen some amplifiers. Yeah, but... I've seen some amps that have uh, tubes on them, you know, displayed prominently, you know, boasting that you're going to get a warmer sound, you know, and that's in quotes, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, look, there's always going to be, I mean, there are people still that, you know, have collections of eight track tapes, you know, for whatever reason or cassettes. Uh, you're always going to find that the the odd one, but for the, for, for 99 point, Five percent of the of of the humanity. Everyone uh, has a right to be wrong. <laughs> I think voice over IP is basically, I mean, is is the future of uh, communications. Really, I, I I think that it is, and uh, um, uh, unless something else revolutionary comes along, and that's not to say that it won't happen. Um, uh, I think that uh, VoIP is definitely going to. I mean, it, you can do so much more with it. You can get so many more features, so much more, so many more abilities that you just couldn't do with switch uh, uh, phone services, switch landlines. Uh, they just, uh, or if you do, they cost so much. It, it's, it makes the, the, the their their use a prohibitive. And again, businesses with with these PBX systems, you know, in the in, in a, a bank of PBX systems in a, in a closet that have to be maintained by IT people. You don't need to do that anymore. You can do all of it in the cloud uh there is not one thing that you can do really with the, these systems that you can't do with a with a pbx system in the cloud uh it's just yep. you want to get that reliability factor to a comfort point and companies such as uh yours mushroom networks are, are obviously working to uh achieve that and uh, yep. uh, uh that's just really great anything else you want to let our listeners know before we say uh, good afternoon uh, uh jay and no, Craig I, and Ben, I really enjoyed uh, our discussions, and and thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, and, and again, best of luck to you, and and keep us informed as you come up with. Maybe when you come up with that little consumer device, <laughs> you know, then we, we'll you, we'll be working on that. Yeah, <laughs> let us know, and we'll have you back on the show. Uh, uh, listen uh, again. Very informative, uh, though. Yeah, very. Dr. Jay Aiken again with the uh, co-founder, co-founder and CEO of Mushroom Networks. Again, thank you so much for being with us here today on Computer America. It was a pleasure. Likewise. All right. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. There you go. Uh, again, uh, Mushroom Networks. You can check it out at ComputerAmerica.com or you can go to MushroomNetworks.com. But you go to our homepage at ComputerAmerica.com and check it out for yourself. Again, uh, I want to thank Intel for being with us here in the first hour of the show. We had Jason Ziller, Intel's director of Thunderbolt Marketing. We were talking about Thunderbolt 3 technology. Just takes your breath away. 40 gigabits per second up and down. I mean, just amazing. Uh, I mean, really, w when he starts talking about these speeds, uh, you know, with the connection between the hardware and you take something like, uh, you know, one gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second internet connection that some places in the world have, you start to see just a glimpse of what the future is going to be for people. I, I mean, it's not, you know, nowadays... I feel like a lot of people have constraints by you know what they can do because of the limit of data and the amount of data that they can download and use and upload. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know if the future is full of forty gigs, you know simultaneously up and down, mm -hmm. and full of ten gigabit per second internet connection, mm -hmm. that's going to change a lot uh, about how we consume and just what we do with data. Yeah, and data and data in all of its glory, whether it be. Uh... Images, movies, videos, voice, for uh, you know, 4K video, virtual yeah. reality doesn't matter. It, it's all going to be, you know, the the band, the pipelines are going to be, you know, big enough that it's going to be able to handle anything. And and I like that. Yeah, and again, also thanks to uh, uh, Bruce Snell, who was with the, uh, who was the director of technical solutions for Intel Security. Uh, talking about the holiday gift items, uh, the Internet of Things, and the security all associated to that. Again, thanks to both of those uh, gentlemen for being with us here on the uh, program. Uh, coming up on tomorrow's show, 
Monsieur Gagné, Marcel Gagné is going to be here. He is our Linux correspondent and Linux expert, and it's all about Linux, everything about Linux and more. We're going to be talking about different li Linux distributions, uh, Linux in the news. Uh, we've got all kinds of things and uh, happening there. And, of course, we'll have a link up to the uh, cheat notes. So if you want to follow along with Marcel, he's also going to have his wine of the month, which I think, which I understand this time isn't really a wine. It's cognac. <laughs> which is a type of wine. It's just been triple distilled, so it brings it down to And he'll explain all that uh, as well. Marcel Gagné is always a lot easily of Easily one of the, easily one of the booziest shows we have here on the show. Yeah, he's, he's very entertaining, a lot of fun, and uh, just a great all-around guy. And uh, uh, we always enjoy having him here on the program. So Marcel Gagné, uh, both hours of Computer America dedicated to the subject of Linux. So if you have any interest in the topic of Linux, and I don't see why you shouldn't. I mean, Linux is everywhere. Let's face it, Linux runs the Internet. Uh, I mean, it's in devices in your home that you might not even realize. Uh, 60 it's everywhere. seconds. Make sure you tune that show in tomorrow. Again, thanks to all of you for being with us here on today's show. It's a lot of fun. And uh, Ben and I will see you here. Same place, same time, same station. Oh, and don't forget that our uh, our contest, our social media contest is happening this Friday. Make sure you go to ComputerAmerica.com and register to win that Logitech Anywhere MX2 wireless mouse valued at $80. Check it out. We could be calling your name if you register. It's just that simple. So about wraps it up. So until tomorrow afternoon, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Have a good one, everyone. Take care. And don't forget CES. <laughs> Very true. Seconds. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Okay. Again, thanks, everybody, for watching our live video stream. And uh, Ben and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.